So today I have, as promised, brought you Brian Wong back once again, because why do we bring Brian on? We bring him on because of his big brain. And, you know, he's going to get a big head because we keep saying it out loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but he does have the largest, the biggest, the most successful science blog in the world, in mm -hmm. the universe even. I think that's yeah. that line up. Anyway, yeah. but, <laughs> but uh, millions of people come every single month to see his blog. If you haven't gone to the, uh, I, always, I always start off wrong. Next Big Future, I got it, Brian. Yeah, great. Bigfuture.com. Uh, you definitely want to go there probably daily and see what Brian has been throwing up there. So mm -hmm. Brian, yeah, great to talk to you, Randy. Okay, great. Listen, I have to start with this, Brian. It has nothing to do with our show. Well, it has a little bit to show uh, do with our show. But uh, Alex just posted on Twitter. Uh, I'm sorry, posted on X. He said, if you invested $100 in General Motors 13 years ago, today you have $94. Mm -hmm. right. And if you adjust that for inflation, it's $66. So, right. yeah, uh, Mary led and it mattered. Okay, so. <laughs> Um, there is a, a thread, mm -hmm. a few analysts have this thread of thinking this there, these are bulls. Mm -hmm. these, these are, uh, uh, you know, analysts that are bullish on Tesla, uh, who believe in the story. Uh, in fact, they believe very much in the story, but they have this interesting take. And I've always just kind of thrown it into the rest of the, this is partly right, partly wrong category, but mm -hmm. you opened my eyes the other day. Right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we're going to open everybody's eyes today. So people like Gary Black and Dan Ives and others, okay, here's their narrative, as I understand it. Maybe you can tell me if I'm wrong here. Their mm -hmm. narrative is full self-driving is coming. Mm -hmm. Therefore, robo-taxis are coming, and that is going to completely change the whole story at Tesla to where the value is in robo taxis and in full self-driving. Mm -hmm. uh, and then most of them also believe the bot, the Optimus bot is coming someday, maybe not next year like I do, but mm -hmm. it's coming soon and that that will change the value and change the proposition once again. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we had on uh, Herbert's show the other day, we had, I forget his name now, I should have looked it up before we started the show, but he had a, he had a guest on who suggested that the bots and the and the uh, cyber and the uh, robo taxis would eventually be ninety percent? Stern Basher. Stern Basher. Thank you for having that. No way. And uh, and uh, he suggested that the bots and the cyber and the uh, robo taxis would make up ninety percent of the value just a few years from now. Right. All of these folks have in common, plus others, many others, have in common that they think that Tesla is only going to make. 7 million cars, 8 million cars, maybe 10 million cars in 2030. Mm -hmm. It says it's 20 million. Mm -hmm. Where I stopped the analysis. Right. But you didn't. So right. tell me why this analysis doesn't hold water. I, 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 I... Because your first 100,000, uh, 250,000, even a million Tesla bots go into the Tesla factories and increase car production. They lower the car prices. They they enable the unbox process, which drives prices down twenty percent. So th that goes to this whole, you know, static pricing thing. That that mm. if Tesla can lower the prices a bunch, they sell a lot more cars, and they can also make a lot more cars. So once there there is no world in which they get Tesla bots, and they don't utterly crush, you know, they, they do within like three, four years, you know, before 2030, right? They have four years of it, that they don't crush the 20 million car target, that they, that they you know, get to 40, 50 million cars because they, they change the world. It's not like, you know, I become Superman and then I'm still, uh, you know, having to, having to, you know, to, to sell flip burgers at McDonald's. You know, I, I may choose to do that, but that doesn't align. All right, so let me let me see if I can reiterate what you just said. Uh, so basically, right now you have a certain throughput in the factories. 
mm -hmm. uh, that is that is that is limited to some degree by the kind of robots that are being used, uh, and by also the human factors that are being used in the factories, um, and also the cost is at a certain level that is. They're getting it down. They're getting it down a percent and two percent and three percent here and there as they make the bots better and they they get rid of some of the humans, and things are getting better and better. But then you add in the Optimus robot, the Optimus humanoid robot, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you have the the bot has capabilities of how long he can work, how fast he can work, how uh, how he's never going to get tired and make mistakes like humans do, which is all of these things are going to increase the throughput. And some of the bot, some of these robots that are in, that are this standalone robots, these, what do they call them? I forget the brand, the name on those are, <laughs> I just the, the industrial arm robots thing. Yeah. 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 Those things. And there's, they, they're stationary and they have limitations of what they could do. Whereas yeah. the Optimus humanoid, humanoid robot doesn't have those limitations. So that could speed up things. You're then saying the, the unbox process speeds up things and that's yeah. made possible by bots. Mm -hmm. And then all of that eliminates humans, which lowers the cost even more. Did I right. get it? So, so that goes, I think it's even something than that, at least like, I get 20,000 people in the, in the China factory. And if, you know, the bots are, you know, once you work, work out the salary stuff, you know, they're five times cheaper, 10 times cheaper. Right. And they can do the work of some of those people, right? Half the people, three quarters of the people, some number, right? Let's just do half. Yes. Right. So 10,000 people now, and now I'm talking 10,000 bots and the bots are 10 times cheaper. So, I just took out 40% of my costs. I have 10,000 trained people that I can put into the other factory or another line or do something with them to increase production because I, I want to keep them working. I can I can roughly double up the the amount of um factory and factory lines if I'm if, if I was constrained by the number of workers. Right. Right. Yeah. So one of the things is of course just the constraint on workers in general. Right. Uh, but also because you know this is going to happen, you can plan for ad additional facilities ahead of time as it's coming into place. Right. So so on the one hand, you're saying, OK, this all of this will increase the throughput. So that mm -hmm. solves the production side, mm -hmm. It'll lower the cost, which should increase the TAM, because yeah. if the car costs less, then competitors cost e even BEVs if they cost less than other BEVs, but also cost significantly less than other ICE cars, then mm -hmm. that increases the number of people that are interested in the vehicles. Therefore, you've got higher production and higher demand, both mm -hmm. at the same time. Is that, is that? Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. And, and um, a simple historical example is not, you know, going to people want to go to like the iPhone and, and you know, versus the flip phones and, and how they increase the, the total addressable market, which is, Partly true based on the product side, but I think the more accurate uh, thing to look at is Ford, the original Ford, Henry Ford, created the ass moving assembly line thing, right. drastically lowered the cost of the cars from something approaching hand assembly into you know mass production, and so he went you know they went from like a hundred thousand cars up to millions and tens of millions. So this impact of Tesla bought unbox process in the factory is a bigger cost reduction volume increasing thing than the Henry Ford production line, right? So, so that's why you're gonna 10x, 100x. You know, it's also not even not even that you're gonna get more share, which you would of of the available 80 million, 100 million cars. Is that you could blow it up to a demand of 300 million cars a year because now I can make a $10,000 car that, that's no compromise that, that opens up the India market and, and, and the rest of the world and all that kind of stuff. And then you can start crushing all the used cars because I mean, right now for the, for the ice cars, it's like 80 million new cars. And then we got this, you know, 300 million, 500 million used cars kind of floating around, how many tr transactions occurring there, and they're at $20,000, $10,000, something like that, right? right? So if you get down to $10,000, you're blowing away the entire used car market, 
right? And saying, okay, this goes to the whole rapid, I'm going to change the 2 billion cars in the world right. to this. Right. And, and meanwhile, the battery costs are the battery costs, which is the biggest part of the cost of the automobile. Those costs are coming down rapidly and are expected to come down even more rapidly. Uh, not only Tony C, but by the way, thinks this, there's plenty of other folks out there that are analyzing the costs of the of the components as well as the changing nature of the components that are going into the batteries that say that the batteries could come down from maybe they're costing eight or nine thousand dollars in a vehicle today they might be costing three thousand dollars in the vehicle uh in the future forgetting about the ira advantage uh you know in terms of government subsidies those will probably go away at some point but you still might be looking at a third the cost of today's battery just in a few years and hit therefore your 10,000 or 12 or $15,000 new vehicle becomes a reality. Right. So, so there's, you know, a few simple formula type things where you look at, okay, what's, you know, I got this factory, it costs X billion dollars, you know, like I think the what, rule of thumb from um, uh, Ron Barron, you know, like what, the uh, $5 billion factory, $10 billion factory producing $10 billion worth of cars or something like that. And then, if you and you produce a million cars so then if you were to by putting bots in there increase the capacity like and now make three million cars out of it versus the one million from the same rough factor by you reorient some things then you know you you've tripled this production you know it has these um dominoes down the line where all your financials get get more wonderful Yes. Right. And and then you can start having more money to do more things and all that kind of stuff. So it's you know, it's just going past the first principle to say this happens and then oh yeah, this other stuff changes, right? Even the simple thing of, around the, the 4680 batteries, you know, like the the two year delay in getting 4680s up to 100 gigawatt hours a year is the reason that the Cybertruck is more expensive than it would otherwise be because we didn't get the the better 4680s in there. So it had this, you know, knock on effects. You have the negative effects when you miss it, but if you nail it and say, okay, now we, you know, next year we get 75 gigawatt hours of batteries uh, and they're and they're version three, version four, 10, 20 cent better, then the entire equation about how many I can sell, how much it costs changes. Changes, yeah, yeah. All right. So therefore, we are so that, that that already really puts the 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 logic into this story in a completely different way. Um, they're thinking like old automotive companies still. I mean, these are guys that are bulls on Tesla and should be getting it by now. I have to admit, I mean, I still thought they'd make 20 million, but just because I think Elon's going to hit his number, <laughs> but, but, but these guys are their log logic. Their method of thinking is the old style, which is you're, you're going to ramp based on building 10 more factories. Are mm -hmm. you going to ramp based on, you know, how are you going to find enough people to buy these things? but they're not taking into consideration the things that you just discussed but then there's icing on the cake there's a cherry on the top of the whipped cream and that's on the whole full self-driving and uh robo taxi side which again gary black and dan ives and and uh most of these bulls say yeah these things are coming it's just a matter of which day it's not a matter of of never it's a matter it might be two years still but it's coming so how does that play in uh brian well, it, it's if it works perfectly, um, or not perfectly, if it works, um, a super comfortable ride, um, four times, 10 times safer than an average driver, right? Then um, you, you'll be able to lower insurance prices, your, your cost of ownership comes down, and it, the um, you know the attachment rate of people who choose to, to do it, it it's like... Um, um, you know, again, I think the the flip phone versus the the smartphone, iPhone kind of thing, that would be more appropriate because it's the same thing, but the software and everything about it is better that um, the the product value becomes a lot more and that and that people want to do it. Plus, I think there's also the, the you know, there's a whole revenue generation aspect of it that I can 
Airbnb out, you know, robo taxi out my vehicle, what changes the economics of what I what I own, right? So, but it, it's um, more powerful economic signal than um, um, power walls, where okay, I, I made an extra three thousand dollars per year, what, you know, which was good, but because it cost thirty thousand dollars, ten percent, you know, versus other things which could be like I could get thirty percent, fifty percent of the value of the vehicle, which is a more um it's the better you, yeah, yeah it was it's, it's more of a hit you in your face with a with a baseball bat kind of like right. signal right right it's like you know make this much money on it and it's like it's not like oh you know 10 percent. oh yeah that's good you know i, I reduce my cost it's not uh, uh people don't necessarily you know respond as much to it you know like for me i i get the math right away and i can see okay you know power walls save 10 percent. you know i change the thing in my head but many other people right. not great at math may not quite get it but if it's if it's as clear as holy crap i made my money back in a year or two right. and then it's then it's like as opposed to 10 years 10 years too far two years oh okay yeah. then <laughs> yeah so okay so we have two, two so once again what we're talking about here is really dramatically increasing the tam so we we have a, a you say okay we increase the tam by lowering the cost so you got india south america pl places where people haven't even considered owning a car now can consider owning a car the wealth factor goes up in the whole world as this happens but then we add in the optim we i'm sorry we add in the fsd the fsd we've you know elon's been talking about it for years you now just freed up some of your time even if you want to continue to own the vehicle you freed up time while you're in your own vehicle because you can read, play games, you know, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Actually, look at the scenery while you're going instead of driving, and you can't look at the scenery. So you have huge amounts of advantages in terms of putting FSD in. So not having FSD. So if uh, Mary is still in business by then and she doesn't have FSD in her cars, and Tesla does, people are not going to want to buy the General Motors product just because it doesn't have this benefit um so that's right so and, increase the tam that way right and then the other thing would be that um just like the, the high-end uh cyber truck which you know beat the you know f-350 yes right the people who are looking at the business side use case of cyber truck you know will say oh yeah i'm not going to buy an f-350 because i actually need to haul something and this works and i run my numbers on it and so the business commercial purchases increase there right. for the robo taxi for the self-driving truck for you know deliveries of a semi or for a self-driving semi truck the people who are going to do the business of it like if i'm going to rent out vehicles taxi fleet that you know would take care of you know getting the introduction and the, and the large scale stuff to happen right? right even if i as a uh residential home person may not think oh, I, I don't want to do business and blah blah blah. the people who do want to do business the people like the people who do the airbnb who say oh yeah i'm running an airbnb business i can make the money right the other people say i, I don't want to rent out my room i don't want to do this or that so they don't do it but the people who are looking at the commercial end will drive it and that will you you could end up doing it indirectly you know the person could say okay i will not um create an, an airbnb but i will go to an airbnb right 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 so i will not become a robo taxi provider but i will use a robo taxi right so so it's and the but the, from the analyst gary black side of the world it happens is the point it, it is that tesla gets a lot more sales right think the prices go down volumes go up it happens even though there could be some lags right and and I think what we've all what you and I have been talking about for a long time, which most people I don't I think most of the community has not even contemplated this. They haven't really thought it through. Is when Elon talks about twenty million vehicles in in uh, twenty thirty, he's probably talking. He he probably was thinking. Quite frankly, Elon was probably thinking uh, nineteen million nine hundred thousand. Robo taxis and a hundred thousand people buying cars. <laughs> I think I personally think there's going to be a lot of people still buying cars at that point. Salesmen, police departments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So many people that'll still fleets uh, and just people that want to own it 
I, I thought of mothers who have to put the the uh, seat in and out, the baby seat in and out of the car. They're not going to want to do that every single time with with a robo taxi. So there's, I think there's going to be a component. So maybe that number in 2030 is 10 million cells and 10 million that go into the robo taxi fleet. I, I think you know we we saw the you know what eighty page master plan three, yeah. So in their analysis, they consider stuff you know like you know variability of, of electricity, all the stuff that's here now, the detailed stuff. But they do not then layer on top. We change this, and then this other stuff happens Absolutely. because if you do that too much, you know it's, it's a whole predicting exponentials and that kind of thing. You end up with. This is a realistic thing, a scenario where these rare things happen and this causes this and then and this is get to this number. But if you do too much of that, all your misses or your gains become huge. It's like, okay, I could have 50 million or I could have 10 million. It's like the range gets too big, right? Um, it could it could be the more realistic thing that happens. Right. You know, me as a futurist predictor, and you know, I'm I'm metaculous and you know, top one percent predictor, is that you there's being correct and there's being, you know, um, some, saying something publicly that, okay, no. I'm going to do do this and, and I'm quite confident it's going to happen, but I don't want to say that the two or three things that I know would result will happen because then it um, it makes the... Um, Your prediction, prediction rate go down. <laughs> yeah, prediction rate go down and then the, the bar is too high, all this stuff goes out, right? It's like I can... I'm perfectly happy to change an update prediction once we have that thing in the past. And yes. now I'm building upon that. Yes, yes. Yeah, I get it. Okay. So let's see if I can recap this then. A whole bunch of folks believe that Elon is completely wrong about the 20 million, but right about robotaxis and right about Optimus. And yet if Optimus happens, then the price of the car goes down, the ability to make more goes up. Um, and so you have the ability to make the 20 million and you have the TAM. Then if you throw on top of that, you throw on top of that the, the RoboTaxi fleet and FSD. Now you increase the TAM again to the point of where all other cars that don't have the uh, FSD capability um, become junk, <laughs> become, become much less uh, likely to be purchased. So the so now getting to the twenty million in terms of the per, the buying side, get, getting enough folks interested that becomes like a no brainer. Which of course brings up the whole other thing that you and Larry Goldberg basically brought to the ent entire community. People don't realize, you know, it's this channel, <laughs> it's you, it's me, it's Larry. We're the ones that are coming up with this new stuff. The the Elon Musk mission that still has stuff in there that hasn't happened yet. And the sales have dropped to almost nothing. But people don't realize that book is still chock full of futuristic stuff that hasn't happened yet. Um, um, but basically, you guys brought to the fore the idea that these companies are going to be wanting to buy not just FSD from Elon or from Tesla. They're going to be wanting to buy the entire operating system they're going to be wanting to buy the sled um they're, they're going to be you know they're going to have to buy all of this either license it or buy finished product from tesla because tesla is just so far ahead yeah yeah i, I see that more of a, as a political thing that uh, you know countries like japan germany where you know large percentages of their, of their economy are tied to the car industry, that they would want, you know, in China it would be included in that thing, where they would want um, Tesla to not wipe out their their car industry and their economy. They, they would say, okay, we we want you to do this deal. Just like they're, they're negotiating the thing with, with India, like bring stuff over, keep a certain amount there. And this would be part of that. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, Brian, I think we've done it. I think we've done what we promised. Mm -hmm. We said this was, once again, on this channel <laughs> have you told your friends about this channel not you <laughs> you the audience have you told your friends about this channel have you promoted this on x have you promoted it on your other social media have you just sent off a note to somebody in the email and said you know you got to listen to these guys because they're so far ahead of the rest of the crowd in understanding what the plan is and where the plan is going well 
I think you should do that. That'd be nice of you anyway. Because <laughs> we haven't caught up with these other guys yet that are getting, you know, uh, uh, 20,000, 30,000 views. That's that's what this channel should be getting. And it because we basically are usually the guys that are front running the things that are going to be happening in the future. Okay, uh, uh, Brian, thank you so much for coming on as usual. And mm -hmm. uh, to all of you out there, we will, uh, it's been great talking to you. Thank you. Um, if you don't mind, I do want to pitch my little, uh, my little device here. I have these uh, little devices for 25 bucks. You, you've, you, you can't believe how cool this is. Look at how thick the stainless, I mean, holy mackerel, it comes in, <laughs> it comes in a camo as well. It's a can opener. I mean, I'm sorry, not a can opener, a bottle opener. So you got, you got your bottle opener here too. And it's got a magnet on the back so you can slap it up on your fridge. I mean, huh? Is this good or what? So anyway, you just send 25 bucks to my PayPal account. It's down in the information below. Just click on there. You can send it 20. Now, if you're out of the country, I got to charge you an extra 20 bucks for uh, for freight. So and or if you join my Patreon, I'll give you one for at the $10 level. I'll give you one for free. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle or audiobook now.